Good morning everyone, it's Joker, and today we are back with another slime video. And today we're going to be going into Inferno 3 now of the Overlord Beatdown Battle. And I'm going to record this early, it probably won't go out for a while, but I'm going to record it before we get the other banner units for the Overlord meta, because obviously if you have everyone from the meta, I mean... It's not a guarantee that you can clear Inferno 3, because you, you do need some good gear. But at the same time, the new meta team will make it very, very possible. So I'm going to attempt to use it with teams that are not overly possible. Um, the first off is going to be this team. You know, we used it for the EX versions and all the other runs. This team definitely has way more than enough power to do it, even without the other two or three Overlord collab units. So, Rimuru... Nabe for our orb changing, Dark Shincher for the buffs, Dark Milum for the orb change and her buffs, the almighty power of Idol Shizuka, and then obviously Ainz himself. So overall, I mean, this stage, he he just has a fuck ton more health, right? He's got like 2.7, yeah, almost 2.7 million HP, which is the highest amount of HP we've ever seen for a boss thus far. Um, high attack, very high defense. Uh, he doesn't raise his base attack though he only raises his light attack and it does go up by quite a bit so like right here it can get very high and that's to get around the vengeance team because the vengeance team does more vengeance damage based on the attack stat not the light attack stat so there are times and i'm gonna have to record uh, the vengeance run and it's gonna have to be a stun team along with Vengeance, because I tried to use the traditional Vengeance, and by like turn 15, he pretty much one-shot everybody with normal attacks, even with Guard up. So it's just not really viable, because the Vengeance, it's not going to do 2.6 million damage. It's going to cap out at like 450,000 or something like that, and he heals, right? He's got a heal skill right here, 70%, which is like it's like almost 1.6 million HP that he heals or something like that. It's crazy, and if he if you the vengeance drops him below the into the twenty five percent range, he's going to heal a million HP over and over and over again, and it, it's just impossible to try and do without keeping him stun locked or something. So that's we're going to use the vengeance stun team for that, uh, the overlord team, and then the idol team can obviously do it because they can't die. So let's just go ahead and jump in. All right, so on turn one we're going to use the orb change with Nabe, and then we're going to swap her out. Now, remember that Leon uh, seals attack skills on turn 1 and turn 5. So here, we're going to leave um, Shinsha in, but her dark buff, we're not going to use that until turn 8 when we're ready to nuke. It's much more impactful having her not, or having Shizuka not sealed than having Shinsha not sealed, because Shizuka is, has the attack buff, the weakness strike buff that we're going to use pretty much every single turn and we don't want that sealed for multiple turns in a row because that's just going to cut our damage down so here we got a pretty good orb change so we're able to use the uh, crit resistance down from shinsha 15 points it also gives all orbs extra skill points permanently which on top of what reamer is doing means that we're never going to run out and then we're going to orb change with nabe and that leaves us with just enough points to then bring in Shizuka. But we're going to reset everything here first. That way, next turn, everything is back at normal cost. And then we'll bring Shizuka in. And we'll use the live mode buff right here. Because it's doing double duty, right? It's giving 12% attack on this turn for, every, you know, 2% per green orb. And then the 10% alt resistance down. So it's more, I think, I think that buff ends up being more impactful than the weakness strike. Even though the weakness strike stacks faster. And that's just because it's it's doing two different things at once versus the weakness strike being one and then a heal. Uh, this turn, kind of unfortunate. Um, <laughs> there's only so much we can do here. So I believe we just send every... I just think we send the alt and the five oranges and then leave it. We're going to use the weakness strike buff here. Again, no, it's important that it wasn't sealed. We can leave Shinsha up front for a few turns and have her not be sealed. Um, and, and it'll be fine because, again... We're not using her until turn 8. We're just using her other skill consistently, which does increase our damage by quite a bit. I mean, it's 5% crit resistance down per, per stack. And it, when we're going to be running a crit-focused team, it becomes pretty impactful. So Nabe can come in here, and then... Let's see. 
what are we gonna do here? I think, yeah, I think we just send it. So I, I'm just thinking what I wanna do, but there we go. So sending the four oranges and the alt just to get Shinch's alt out of there because I wanna be sending full hands of greens as much as possible. But I believe this does also get us the Ein's alt, which is kind of unfortunate uh, going into turn four. We have four more turns that we just have to play around with it. And we don't have a unit on, on like a mainline Overlord unit that alt swaps yet. We may get that um, this week as of recording this, because right now it's um, what it's the 29th, and we should get a double banner on Thursday the 1st. So maybe one of those units has an alt swap. Maybe one of them has the orb change that I want, the triple or the triple orb change to green. Uh, here's hoping though. So gonna use a few buffs here, and then we're gonna save the Ein's alt because we want to build up to an ex alt. But because we don't have an alt swap, we have to send five greens at this point, or he's gonna miss out on a lot of those stacks from live mode and all and everything else. So here's playing around. All right, so turn five is coming in. We cannot have Shizuka up front on this turn otherwise her weakness buff will be sealed and i don't want that so we could you know leave milam up front and then nobody will be sealed i think shinsha might be sealed for one more turn but as long as we don't put her up front again she'll be okay and even if we do bring her up front like she'll be unsealed by turn eight so we can get around it but no she's not sealed anymore so We'll go ahead and use the buffs from Shizuka, and then she can go away. Uh, we're going to bring Shinsha in for Shizuka. We'll probably use one stack. No, actually, we won't. We're just going to bring Milam in. So, because we don't have enough points to use the Shizuka, or the Shinsha buff and the orb change, because we've already used our skill reset. And that's, you know, just the problem with not having six hands of greens all the time. It's always five greens and something now. Uh, guarding, honestly, like, your orb damage here doesn't really matter, especially with, like, this team build being just the first three units of the meta. Like, we're gonna do plenty of damage, so normal orbs are not as impactful as just a big-time nuke, but we're gonna use pretty much everything here. So orb change, orb change, and then the despair, and then we'll bring Shizuka back in now that she's safe from being not sealed. And then we'll go ahead and reset. No, actually, we have to send the greens. All right. So we're going to use a stack of Shinja here because I'm not really going to use it after this. And then we'll burning Shizuka in. And next turn, we will reset because we don't have an Arimaru right here. But this is just giving us more damage and in a roundabout way, crit resistance down. Skill points is always good. Here we've got a pretty good hand, and it's going to be turn 7, so this is the pre-nuke turn. And we can do some things here. So we can reset all the skills on this front line, which is important because we have to, like five of them to use or something like that. And then we're going to swap Nabe out after we use her specific Stern of Spirit orb change because it'll turn those two Nabe orbs like directly because it's the only ones we have. And then we can just get her out. And we can bring Milam in. And we can use, a, you know, an expensive orb change, yes, but we're going to have enough to nuke and with plenty of power left over. So Despair, both Shizuka buffs, the orb change, and that's going to be five greens. And this will also get Shizuka's ult, which is, uh, it, it is impactful because we'll be able to lower uh, Leon's magic resistance by 15% uh, from her ult effect, which will just enhance how much damage Ainz does at the, at the end of the day. So overall, I mean, it's not a great run, right? We're not sending full sixes. We got Ainz's ult early. Um, this could, this run could have gone a lot better. Like, I've done, like, double the amount of damage that we're about to do here on, on a few runs, but this one didn't really play out the way I wanted it to a lot of the times. So we've used the alt buff and the 25% uh, attack buff with Milim because she is skill-fused. We use the dark buff now that it's full power at the 70% instead of 50 because it's turn 8. And then we'll go ahead and use the crit buff, magic buff, and then the uh, we'll use the other Shizuka, uh, Shizuka buffs. And we'll have a full hand of green, which will be another 6% attack because of live mode, along with another 5, 15% alt resistance down, 20% weakness strike. And then we'll go ahead and hit the alt with Shizuka first to lower the magic resistance, and then we'll alt with ions after that, and it's going to be plenty of damage. We don't need any other follow-up. 
So Shizuka's damage is irrelevant. I, like, I don't care. <laughs> 73k? I, I, she could have done one. It wouldn't have mattered. Because Eins, and we'll watch his alt, is about to lay down the Bone Daddy hammer on poor little Leon. And it's going to make mincemeat out of him. And that is, you know, the first clear of Inferno 3 with the half meta team. Still pretty good, because he has 2.7 million health, and we do 4.3. So, definitely did not need all that, but definitely, definitely used all of it. So there we go. Cleared with the half meta team. I think we'll come back once the full meta is out, and then we'll do it with that run instead. And then I've got, I think, a separate video that's going to happen with the Vengeance and Idols. But we'll see how I want to play it. All right, next up is the idol team. Uh, this team, if, if you have you know the pretty sparkle units, you can fodderize the stage. It's a green focused stacking team technically, while maintaining invincibility. So there, if you have the idols, there should be no reason why you can't clear the stage, even on Inferno Three. Like even if you have low gear, like it'll take you a long time, sure. But if he can't kill you, <laughs> eventually you will do enough damage. So. Idle Ream Root Protector. We're going to bring the free-to-play Isis for our blue orb changing for turn one and her green buff. It's going to be pretty impactful on this team because we're not bringing Subasa. Leon is a single target alt, so he doesn't really give her that much attack. Shizuka, again, is here. We've got the skill point units, uh, Milim and Zoe, so we can use both of Isis' skills turn one. Dark Lumi will give us that passive alt damage buff. And then Dark Milim will be our nuker, being a dark unit magic who's going to get the live mode and the weakness strike and the magic buff here. So we'll eventually get Milam stacked up enough to where she can do a lot of damage. And then Mirai is also here for future Hand of Greens and another live mode. We're going to go through this at not quite hyper speed, but definitely faster because it, it does take a hot minute. Um, but I mean, this team is pretty brain dead. It's probably actually the most brain dead team in the game uh, next to the new Valor Cup team with the New Year's units. And I'd say it's like a lot more brain dead than the vengeance team because the vengeance team you can die right you do need to play around with things and there are situations where the vengeance team just doesn't work um even on a green stage so here i mean <laughs> you, you you cannot take damage after a point right because you're just going to be cycling rimru over and over and over and you'd actually have to like force yourself into a bad scenario to take damage so we're going to work on getting Lumi's four stacks of alt buff relatively quickly. That way we can just move her out. She is dark and she is magic, so she will get, you know, super weak point versus this Leon. And she'll tank relatively well, but she does not have the invincibility. So what we want to do in, you know, a real in a best case scenario is get her done by like turn five or six or something. And then she never sees the front of the field again. And we only have Shizuka, Mirai, and Milam up front that way we're always invincible but there will be some times where we do have to swap an isis to use her green buff because it again is a pretty impactful buff um i realize i swapped milim out there maybe not the best idea but oh well she's gonna be missing a little bit of live mode and the weakness strike it doesn't really matter though i just you know we got quite a bit of gauge there and then we'll bring milim in for whoever else has the most and we're not looking to stack, like, hold on to any alts here. Like, we're just going to send it as they come because we don't have Shuna to swap alts out and it's just kind of a hassle. I'd rather just send full hands of greens and get more and more attack off the live mode than attempt to play around with, like, five greens the entire time and not get my full protection gauge and everything like that. So, I mean, it is a good team. And this will definitely do it. And Milam does do a lot of damage towards the end of the fight. It just, you know, you gotta get to that end of the fight first, right? So, 25k on that 200% orb, 100k on the alt. I mean, not a lot of damage right now, but it's only turn 4, and we're invincible. So, what are you gonna do about it? Thankfully, Reamer does eliminate a lot of the RNG. So that should be the third stack now for Lumi. And... I think, yeah, we're going to send her away. We'll bring her back in some other time. May I Actually, I kind of forget. It's been like two days since I recorded this. Sorry. But I don't know if we actually used the fourth stack of Lumi, if I'm going to be completely honest with you. 
All right, so we're going to bring Isis back in, use the green buff again, now that it's turn five. We've gone, you know, a turn and some change without it, but we've still been able to do what we need to do here. All right, we've got an EX ult from Milam. It is what it is. Send the ult. Get me my live mode. Get me my weakness buff. Get me my future hands. Um, until, like, turn, I would say, ten or so, he doesn't do, quote-unquote, that much damage. It's only after you hit turn 10 and go further than that that he really starts to ramp up his attack buff and everything, which is where uh, you run into problems if you're not invincible or you don't have some ridiculously kind of defensive skills or him stunned. So you can get away with not having the invincibility for a number of turns before that and not take all that much damage. And plus Shizuka will be able to heal you up by 35% uh, well, on a single person, you know, every time you use her weakness buff. So, like, every other turn, you can get a 35% heal on somebody in case they do happen to take damage. It just, you probably want to make sure that you have the invincibility up for his alt at this point, because it, it can do a decent amount again. But, let's see. Turn 8 already. I mean, we're making our way through it. Boom. 30k now on the orbs, and then 63k on the 200%, so what, like, four turns ago we were doing 23k on the 200%, now we're doing 60k. I mean, we're stacking, definitely not at a super fast pace, but we're definitely stacking. And then here is like, do we use, do we use them? I think we just kind of hold off, so we're just gonna live mode weakness buff, and then we're, I think we just send the greens, yeah, we just send this hand. And then we'll hold on to this double Rimuru for the next couple of turns. Because the Isis buff is no longer active either, so... Maintaining our invincibility will be good, especially on turns where we don't have it. But there's the heal. We dropped him underneath the 25%, so he healed for like 1.6 million HP or something. And so that's what's going to happen, is that if your nuker is not high enough... Um, you're going to have to sit here and play around with his whole healing mechanic. And you see Mirai actually took a lot of damage there now because it's turn 10 and she was not invincible. So here, this is where it gets a little dangerous, where if you're not invincible, if he doesn't like you, he can kill you. Like He can do two or three hits against the same target and they will die. So this is where maintaining invincibility is very, very important. But then we have this Milam ult, who's you know continually getting stronger with three alts, and we're gonna we're gonna hit it here. We're not gonna alt or like alt buff with Milam, but we're still gonna do a lot of damage, and it's gonna drop him below his HP threshold again, and then he's gonna heal again, and that's the whole problem that people are gonna have to work out. 101k, and then yeah, okay, 1.2 million uh, heal, but yeah, I mean you're if you are not overly smart about it, but you are not sure like there are times where you can think you can nuke and you put him at like a nut tap away and then he just heals it all back and now we're just gonna have to play this whole cat and mouse game of will i or won't i kill with my buffs and there's gonna be a point where you're gonna like all right we just got to take a chance we're gonna use the alt buff and we gotta see if we have enough to actually wipe him out but he, since he has so much hp like he's still got like one point what, 1.7 million HP right here with this much HP left? Like, there's no way Milam can do that much. Not right now. Even with all these additional buffs we've been getting, all the light mode, or live mode attack buffs, the weakness buff, the alt resistance down, the stacking magic. It's like, it's a lot, but... Does it... Can you do it? Or are you just going to be perpetually stuck in this whole heal um, roundabout? So I think that's the biggest issue we're going to have with Leon and Inferno 3 and the idols. Because if you don't have Dark Milum, this is going to take you a lot longer. Because you're going to have to rely on like Mirai or somebody. Because I think Milum is the only Dark unit on Pretty Sparkle. I, I may be mistaken in that. I mean, hold on, let me, let me check that. But, I mean, if, if that's not a thing... Uh... Okay, so Milam's got 137% magic, 116 attack, 25% attack. We're going to alt here, and we're going to pray that this works out. So Milam, 1.16 million damage, and then the 200% orb does 135k. But luckily, he did not heal. We, I would have been so pissed off 
so there you go. We're on turn 15, and she didn't do enough. And this Milum is 120, and she's skill-fused. So there's 1.2 million right there with the buff. So there we go. We are finally able to kill him with the idle team. It took a hot minute, but it does work out. Um, let me check for Pretty Sparkle really fast. And yeah, she's the only dark unit on Pretty Sparkle. So if you don't have Dark Milum and you're stuck with like Mirai and she's good, then it's going to take a lot longer. All right, I think we're going to end the video here. Obviously, there are more teams that will be able to beat this, and I will have videos on those teams, but and this video is already like 20 minutes long, and the two other teams that I have already beaten it with are much, much longer, so I think they're going to get their own videos. Um, so stay tuned for those. Obviously, the new meta team, or the, well, at least the half meta team, as we've shown off, can definitely do it. If you're missing Shizuka, don't worry, just bring another support unit. Like, it really doesn't matter. Bring an alt buffer if you don't have Milum. Bring uh, an attack buffer, like Space Reamer or something. Like, Shizuka definitely is not necessary. It just makes it very easy. And then for the second uh, the second team with the idols, like, you kind of need the idols to do it, right? Because that's the whole shtick is that the pretty sparkle units are invincible. If you don't have the idol team, then it's, it's a no-go. Um... But there are definitely other teams that can do it, which I will show off in the future. But let me know what you guys think. That's it for me. Take it easy, and I'll see you all later.